Hi there everyone, in this video today we're going to be looking at continuous random variables in the very first video in this series of videos on this topic. Uh, we've studied discrete random variables and we know a little bit about what they are. A random variable, remember, is just a, a variable that changes depending on the outcome of an experiment. So discrete random variables are random variables that only take on particular values. So the number of cars passing a certain point in a day would be a discrete random variable. The number of people in a room at a certain time would be a discrete random variable. Um, in this unit of work, we're looking at continuous random variables. So they are random variables where there's uh, between any two given values, you could have infinitely many values. So we're talking about things like height and weight and time, those kinds of things. Are continuous random variables so we might define a random variable as the height of a randomly chosen student from year 11 at a school now <clears throat> technically I guess you could say well there are either 165 or 166 centimeters but if we measured really accurately you could be anywhere between 165 and 166 in fact we could say that there's infinitely many heights between 165 and 166 if you really measured accurately so these are continuous random variables and we're, we're going to look at uh, all kinds of things, probabilities um, associated with them. Um, let's look at the syllabus. First of all, we're talking about um, using relative frequency. So it's important that we understand what that word means. Relative frequency is just probability. That's really all it is. And I'll show you an example of how this works. In this video, we're going to go through relative frequencies and histograms obtained from data to estimate probabilities associated with a continuous random variable. Um, <clears throat> in the next videos, we're going to look at the concepts of what a probability density function is, a cumulative distribution function, probabilities associated with continuous random variables, uh, which is going to involve integration. We're going to look at the expected value or the mean and the variance and standard deviation of a continuous random variable like we did for discrete random variables and then effects of the change of scale and origin which is an, again a concept that we've already looked at with discrete random variables with you multiply by two and add one what happens to the mean what happens to the variance and standard deviation so let's have a look at this first example here where we've just got a simple um, simple weights of a number of animals. So we've got 100 animals and we've put them all in this, uh, this table here and we've grouped them according to 10 kilo increments. Now you might want to change those increments in which case the graph would look a little bit different and this would change but given as it is now we've got weights of animals from 0 kilos up to 100 kilos. We've got 100 animals. So the relative frequency of getting an animal let's say between 0 and 10 would be 2 out of 100 or 0.02 okay so that's the the relative frequency okay I'll just call that RF the relative frequency just the same as probability so if we had 50 animals and three of them were in a certain category then the relative frequency would be 3 out of 50 okay that's it so it's, it's just kind of like probability so here's the histogram based on that data based on that table you can see we've got relative frequency on the y-axis, not just frequency. And uh, now we could just relate now the questions, well, what's the probability that animals fall into a certain category? So the question here says, uh, what's the probability that if x is the weight in kilos of a randomly selected animal from the 100 collected, determine the probability that x was between 50 and 60? Now it's really important here for me to just make a note of these two. Because there is theoretically infinitely many weights between 50 and 60 let's say, it really doesn't matter if we say x is greater than or equal to 50 or just greater than 50 because the probability of being any one particular weight in that interval between 0 and 100 is 0. Okay, imagine, um, imagine you've got a, a field the size of, of an oval, a huge oval at a school and you threw a ball on there and we said what's the probability that the tip of the ball would hit this exact blade of grass the the exact tip of the atom of this blade of grass the probability would be minuscule and close to zero and that's the same kind of idea we've got here so if I ask that what's the probability that you weigh exactly 45.6832177857785 kilos the answer is zero because theoretically 
there is infinitely many weights in between any two given values. So we can only talk about probability of a range of values here for continuous random variables, not an exact value. So it doesn't matter here if I had greater than or equal to or just less than for both of them. It really doesn't matter. Um, they're both going to give us the same thing. So what's the chance that we're between 50 and 60? If I look on here, uh, there's the answer right there. It's 0 0.08. And again, we could go back and work that out from the table. Uh, there's 8 out of a possible 100. So the answer to that first question there is 0 0.08. The second one was probably x is between 50 and 90. So now we've got 50, between 60 and 70, 70 and 80, 80 and 90. So we'd have to add all those up. 0.11, 0 0.13, 0 0.15. So if we add all those relative frequencies up, we should get 0 0.15. What's the chance that we're exactly 45 kilos, as I've just explained? Zero. The chance of you being any particular value is zero. And D, a <clears throat> little bit of conditional probability here. What's the chance that we are more than 90 kilos? So that is, we are, looks like there's only one animal in that range, given that we're greater than 50. And again, I could have greater than or equal to 50 here, it wouldn't matter. So given that we're greater than or equal to 50, is all of these things here, which if we add all those up there, 0.11, we get 0.16. So we know that the denominator here for our conditional probability is 0.16. That's all the things we're dealing with. And what's the probability that we're greater than or equal to 90 and all of that is 0.01. So you could either do that on your calculator or if you times the top and bottom by 100, you get 1 over 16 as the exact fraction or as a decimal 0.0625.